So welcome everybody. I am Joe Duramo. I'm one of the partners of My Pinnacle Network, and um, we're oh, My Pinnacle Network is a business-to-business -business networking group. We have four locations, and one in Westboro, Mansfield, Newton, and Marshfield. Uh, it's a monthly B2B networking group. My partner Steve Dubin is also on the call. And many of you are in our groups, and we have kind of a special uh, webinar. We've had these webinars over the course of the pandemic, and we're kind of picking things up again. Uh, we have a special one today featuring uh, Patrick Stanzik of uh, Geek Heroes. Just a little bit about Patrick. He is... Um, he is the founder and CEO of Geek Heroes, which is a fractional CMO. He's got a burning passion and connection to the uh, veterans community. He's focus of his business is web design, SEO, email marketing, automation. And he uh, he's a, a, a veteran of the Marine. So, Patrick, thank you for your service. And that's kind of fuels a lot of his business. And I know Patrick from some networking groups and uh we had an interesting first few conversations where patrick was a, as an early patrick describes himself as a futurist and he saw ai as the next thing and jumped right in and uh we would have a few discussions and the purest that i am i you know oh we can't you know the real person is always better blah blah blah, blah. no it's a tool you can use it and i've done some one-on-ones with Patrick and he showed me some things. I've attended some of his LinkedIn webinars and I am, uh, I am among the converted. So I asked him if he could do something like the things he does on his LinkedIn profile during the course of the call. I'll put his information in there. If you want to connect with Patrick and see some of that, he's also recently started a YouTube channel. So you can also, um, check out his stuff there. And, um, what I've asked him to do today is Patrick is going to take a, a fairly random client, a business, and create a social media strategy and with content. And time permitting, he'll do even more. But for now, that's going to be the starting point. Um, just some ground rules in terms of how we go about the webinar. Uh, we're going to we encourage some interaction so you know you can you can mute if you've got noise in the background and unmute if you want to chime in with a comment or question preferably questions uh you can also put those in the chat as we go along and um i'm just kind of going to turn it over to patrick and let him run the show because he's done this many times and uh i'll first i'll just introduce the client i don't see uh we have one of the clients um uh, sign up, but I don't see him in here, Patrick. So I'm having worked with him for four years. I think I can guide you. So the random client is Brookline Transportation. They're a moving company and they're based in Hanover, Massachusetts. They are a Mayflower agent. So they're like a franchise and they have a division of their company. They call labmovers.com. And as the name implies, they're, they're focusing on moving labs um, within, within this region, but also within the country. They often do a lot of coastal moves and things like that. Uh, their target audience is commercial realtors, I'm sorry, commercial property owners, uh, facility managers, and lab managers themselves. So that's basically the data that uh, Patrick has. He's got their websites and he's going to create a social media strategy with content. And I'm just going to turn it over. Patrick, you can take the screen. Sounds good. Uh, <clears throat> hey, everybody. Uh, Patrick Sanzak here. And um, thank you all for showing up. Um, let me share my screen and we're going to kind of dive into it. I'm going to frame a lot of things before I do it. And the reason we're doing this random kind of way is because... Um, you know, if I just did it, um, and if I just did it, did everything you, you might come to the conclusion, well, how do I, I use it? And so I want to show you that taking any random company and just all, all I have is their website and maybe a little bit more information that Joe provided 
being able to utilize that and create a whole social strategy that it's that it's uh as simple that you guys can all do it as well. Um, and so that's why we're kind of going this route. All right, so I have pulled up all those things, right? There, um, it's a Brookline Transportation Company, their Mayflower, um, USA Mover, and then their focus is Lab Movers, and that's what we're going to be really focusing on today as their kind of niche. All right. So, uh, you know, the more detailed, the better in order to create any kind of marketing strategy. And so, so that's the focus here. Uh, what we'll be focusing on is creating the social media stuff. Primarily, uh, first and foremost, is going to be the Facebook and LinkedIn strategy as the first two, since AI, uh, the ChatGPT is typically like, you know, content, like written content. And so those two social media platforms are written out. So we're going to start with those. I will also show you um, how to convert them into scripts, how to, it, it'll be a whole bunch of things. So you'll see. So um, let's get started. So this is GPT for anybody who hasn't seen. Um, at this point in time, GPT is, um, it's it's by OpenAI, which is the uh, the main company. And this is one of their products. It's called GPT, uh, known as GPT-4 or 3.5 or 3 or whatever you've heard it by. Uh, but basically, um, if you're going to use it, pay the 20 bucks a month. Um, it is quite a bit better than the free version, which is GPT 3.5 here. Um, GPT-4, if you actually want to create valuable uh, information, like content that you can actually use, really recommend GPT-4 over 3.5. There is a Google version that uh, came out also called BARD. The BARD is also good, um, but it is more so like 3.5 than 4. It's not quite good enough yet. They started coming out with more things here, um, like giving you little prompt ideas, as well as something new, which is custom instructions. So what would you like GPT to know about you to provide better responses? So you can actually input quite a bit of information. So you don't have to keep telling GPT, hey, this is what I do. Can you can you answer the question based on that? And then how would you like GPT to, to respond? And then this is more of like, hey, this is my day to day. This is how my company's voice is, how I, I usually put out content and that. So this saves a little bit of time than, you know, going in there and redoing it over and over again. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to input information. I call this priming. We're going to prime GPT with information and give it a data set um, to work with to then ask questions against. All right. Uh, Bard, B-A-R-D is the Google variant. Um, Alan can help. Um, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on, put in... A little bit of information Joe has provided me, just so you guys can see. It's, it's literally just what, what we said. It's it's a transportation company called Brookline Transportation Company, Mayflower, all that. So I put that in there. I'm going to put more information in now. Now we're going to go to the lab movers. And all I'm doing is I'm copying this and pasting it. And then I'm going to enter a couple more times. And I'm going to, okay, so that's pretty much what they got there. And then they have more case studies and things. So I'm going to throw in some of the case studies as well to kind of give them as much info as possible. So I'm going to, so I just copy paste it and I'm going to ask something to GPT. I'm going to say, it. hey, this is information I need you to have in order uh, for me to ask questions. I have some more case studies I want to give you. Okay, so I'm, I'm I'm priming. I'm giving it a lot. The reason that I do it all at once is sometimes you run out of space and says, "Oh, there's too much. Make it shorter." So I wanted to do that. Um, another thing about GPT is there there used to be about a 25 prompt limit per hour. As far as I know, that is completely gone um, as of about a month ago. So um, you can pretty much use it as much as you need to. They've uh, they've accounted for that at this point. All right. Uh, so now I'm going to put in some case studies. So basically, there's three case studies here. Uh, that, that I pulled up and I'm just going to uh, copy paste them just so there's a little bit more context on how things uh, happen, right? Case studies are a good representation of that. So um, I think you will find that those uh, case studies have been expertly written, Patrick, just throwing that in there. <laughs> Perfect. And that... <laughs> 
and that might be a good voice. Uh, thank you, Joe. I'm, I'm <laughs> sure whoever wrote them is uh, is, is wonderful. And then <laughs> me too. <laughs> All right. And again, the more info we give it, the better. So. And again, that's why that um, that little thing I showed you with the custom instructions uh, being new, that's nice to have because you don't have to keep redoing this. If, if all you're doing is working on your business stuff with this, that's nice. On the left-hand side here, there's a lot of chats. You can actually rename them and they get kind of saved here. And you can scroll down and see all your history. So if you ever were working one day on something, you want to go back to it, um, it's there for you. Okay, so... Um, Here's the last one. And then we're going to get into questions against it. All right. Now, before we get into the content strategy, I need to, you know, not knowing anything, I need to know like a little bit of a summary of what they do. I need to know, I need to know, um, who, uh, me and Joe went over who their primary and he just said who the primary people are that they're focusing on, right? Who are the personas you're actually going after, which is property, commercial property owners, the facility managers and lab managers. So we have to make sure to put that information in here. So, so prime with all the info you can about the company, tell them who you're focusing on is, is step two. So our, um, Or no, it's not. It's not necessarily in an order, uh, right, Joe? So our uh... Uh, our target audience probably first would be the lab man, lab manager, facility manager, property owner. Okay. And be facilities manager. That probably right. is important. Yeah. Okay. And so I want to make sure it knows about this. Now, the next part, right? So we have, we have, we've primed it. Then we're putting in the personas like the, the you, you can go very specific. So when you're doing this for yourself, go very specific, detail it out. What I'm doing is very limited information and we're still can come out with something awesome. Uh, but when you're doing it for yourself, take some time, put in the full personas. And if you don't know what they are, ask GPT, hey, help me create these pull personas based on this information, and let's do that. But for the sake of today, we're not going to try to create them. Um, we have them already, so we're just gonna we're just gonna use them this way. And then step three, I need to figure out what are all of these core uh, personas problems. After problems, we're gonna go solutions. After that, we're gonna have our core niche that we're gonna focus on for our all of our content going forward. And and, and the reason for that is you want your core niche being, you have really deep roots rooted in the people you're actually trying to show this to, which is exactly what we're doing right now. And then any content you put out there um, is gonna be deeply rooted and all make sense and come to a culmination point. And, and, and that's that's really important for branding and all that kind of stuff. So it's the same message, no matter which way you spin it, no matter what social media post you put it on, no matter what, everybody, wherever they see you, um, when you meet them in that place, right, is they're gonna get the same kind of messaging. They're still gonna know what you're doing. Um, we're also utilizing the 80-20 rule. So all the content we're going to be creating is educational based, right? 80-20 rule is, is kind of like this. It's 80% uh, of the time you want to give, 20% of the time you want to ask. Imagine a friend or family member in your past that every time they've called, uh, it's always ended with or started with, hey, can I, can I get help with this? Can I do this? And ask, right? And uh, nobody necessarily likes the, the person that only calls when they need something. Um, and so that's what we're trying to avoid. And that's why you want to do the educational piece 80% of the time and do an ask 20% of the time. And so that's how we're going to spend all the social media stuff. It's tangible things people can use um, about this company, right? So when people think that specific kind of thing, they think Brookline Transportation Company and specifically their lab movers division. So what I put here for those problems is I, I need you to use the information to come up with the top 20 core problems these people have. So we're going to click enter. And 20 is really just a random number. It's really using 
some of uh, you know my my marketing approach and things I've already done uh, in order to come up with these numbers and 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 questions and prompts. Um, so while this is this is working, I want to make sure to note uh, something that was kind of said earlier. GPT is does not do it stuff for you. It is an intern that you have hired. Would you trust an intern with putting stuff out there right away? No. You can't blame the intern. It's not their fault. They're new. They're trying to learn. You give it. You give them information. You ask them questions. They do the things. You check over and look at it, or, or a new hire, right? You check over and look at it, and you're like, "All right, this is good. Let's put it out there." You don't just blindly the first go around just go and do it. So, so remember, it's, um, it's just an intern, and but 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 it's the best assistant you'll ever have too. So it, it's it's not meant to just copy paste uh, right away without making adjustments as needed. And you're the quality control in this case. Um, um, yep. And Patrick, we have a uh, question in the chat, which I think is a pretty good one. Uh, how do you how does Chat GPT differentiate um, the response versus when you're while you're still priming it? Um, I just put in there like a sentence after I enter or at the beginning. I just you can say something like, "Hey." I don't need you to answer any of the questions. I'm going to be putting in a ton of info here. Just don't don't answer anything. I'm not asking a question. You you just say it like that. Speak to it like you would any person. Okay. Mm -hmm. like Thank don't, you. Don't 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 worry about misspellings. It doesn't care. It'll it'll pick it up. Don't worry about if if it's a run on sentence. Don't worry if you're you've you've typed in circles. All right. <laughs> don't reword it. Just let it go. It, it okay. will understand. Um, so it's really, it's really nice that way. Paul, did um, you get, is that, do you have a follow-up to that? Or are you good? Okay. No, I'm good. Thanks, Patrick. That answers it nicely. Thank um, you. I really right. like the part where you said, talk to it like it's a person that, that really crystallizes it for me. Perfect. Perfect. And, and honestly, you could talk to it like, you're, like a, like a buddy, not even like a professional, uh, co-worker so uh, that if that makes things easier for anyone too all right so we have the top 20 core problems and joe you're going to tell me if these are right or not um so the top 20 problems temperature control safety regulations delays in timelines specialized packing uh cost ma uh, management space constraints equipment handling cross-day relations backup and contingency supply chain issues communication logistics infrastructure so like it came up with a lot of stuff here um which is which is fine, right? Um, Get on, actually. It's it's yeah. it's in fact the the biggest issue with lab moves is temperature control and backup plans and things like that. So that's the first thing it listed. So that's perfect. Perfect. And and and, and just to just to make sure everybody understands, this is not like oh, what are all the problems with this? It's what problems does a commercial property owner, facility manager, and lab manager have with the moving process of the lab stuff and and what i'm when i why i mentioned all three is one of those three is going to be in charge of this process and going to be the point person or all three and they're all going to have different concerns and so by telling them these personas we're accounting for all the people's problems not just one and so no longer with gpt do you have to uh, gloss over things, right? Like uh, uh, th there's a lot of times where there's certain parts we really know and there's certain parts we really don't know. And so we lean into the things we know a lot. So where we're asking questions or we're creating reports or we're creating things and we're presenting it, we're talking to someone, we don't have the expertise to cover everything because we haven't experienced everything. And over time you learn things and you get better at it. Whereas now you could do something like this and it accounts for, hey, I thought of all this and more, and this is probably going to give me a way better chance when interacting with this kind of person because I know all of their problems. And so, so that's a nice, um, it's a nice, you know, really, really cool thing you could do. So right now we came up with all the problems. The next thing we're going to do is I need you to come up with all the solutions. So here we go. Now here's the next prompt. I need you to come up with all the solutions to these core problems. These will be used for figuring out the core content niche for our company. Boom. And everything's going to move quite a bit faster now. The foundation is very important, though. You get all the foundation stuff right. Uh, again, it's it, then it's, everything's deeply rooted. And you're going to have the best chance of people actually reading your content, liking your content, 
you know, interacting with it uh, and, and getting business at the end of the day. So let's uh, let's see what's coming up with. So temperature control solution, use specialized refrigerated uh, vehicle equipped with onboarding generators, monitoring your systems to ensure consistent temperature maintenance throughout the move. Safety regulations, continual training sessions for staff and safety guidelines. Delays and timelines implement a phased moving approach, you know, and, and so it's it's going into quite a bit of these. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, but Joe, does this uh, seem pretty, pretty good for this client in terms of some of their solutions they've uh, they've come up with or have uh, already yeah. pretty much? A abs absolutely. In fact, there was one thought I, that's been recent for them with all the new lab space in, in uh, the Boston area is that they're building the space, but it's not ready on time because of supply chain. So it's creating a list. I'm like, okay, we I got to make sure supply chain is, and that's something we've only talked about recently. So it's it's right there. So it's perfect. Yep, awesome. And uh, GPT has been in something weird lately. It's not been typical. It's uh, when it when it does lists and it goes past ten, it just does one 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 one. <laughs> so it's just a funny funny little thing that's happening right now. So don't uh, you know that that's why there's just ones here. All right. So the next thing we're gonna do after this is we have all the solutions and again when you're doing this look into them is it missing anything if it's missing something or something's more important to you type it in the chat as if you're talking to a person give it feedback and it will adjust for that it'll account for that it'll dig deeper for that it'll do do anything like that okay so um the next thing we're going to do All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is I need a core content niche for this. Okay, we're gonna be basically an 80 20 rule of giving 80% of the time and asking 20% of the time. The marketing niche I'm coming up with will be strictly educational and focus on the 80%. Basically, what I need is the answer to if people think um, Brookline Transportation Company. They think lab moves and at the end of the day right that is what your co content's all about is if people think brookline transportation company insert your company name here they think the thing you do right lab moves uh the more niche the better and so now what we're doing is we're, we're going to come up with something pretty cool um let's see let's see, let's see what it does it's, it's always a surprise all right so Empowering lab moves from planning to execution, uh, content pillars, educational resources on lab relocation, logistics challenges, solutions. And we're still we're still doing the beginning portions here. So we're not in social media or anything like that yet. Uh, it'll, it's coming though. So case studies, content formats. Okay, so right now, this is a great example of, um, let's see. This is a great example of it kind of going in a direction where I don't necessarily want it to go. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, hey, this is great. And you want to be nice to the AI because if, if they ever take over the world, uh, they'll remember, right? So, hey, this is great. Uh, I need you to give me uh, five examples of short phrases that... Uh, fill it. Okay, so basically, it's doing a little bit too much here. I, all I wanted was a couple phrases to kind of give us that uh, niche. So. Here's five first phrases. Let's see. Uh, gold standard in lab relocations, trucks broke line. Mm, uh, okay, give me five more shorter ones. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking for something that's a little bit shorter. Okay, 
Uh, Brookline, lab moving excellence. Joe, is any of these kind of summarizing the kind of the, the niche they're kind of going for for the uh, educational content for lab moves? Um, will it say the whole name of the company? Because I think that's important. Uh, Brookline this is a city. This and... is internal. It's okay. It's not going to be anything external. It's just for us to kind of help summarize everything. Um, I would say the lab move masters is probably. Okay, perfect. And again, this part doesn't really need to be perfect. It just has to kind of summarize. Yeah. And this is where we're stemming from. This is going to be our core that everything else is going to come up, come on. It's like, it's like a tree. It's, it's, it goes really, really big up top, right? It grows huge has a ton of branches and everything, but at the core, it's got really strong roots. And that's what we just created. Uh, the 80, 20 rule, you will not have to explain again. So this whole mm -hmm. entire chat, anything I put in here is giving you context and data that when you ask questions, it's 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 remembering all that to phrase the answers. Um, There's just another question there too. Would hitting regenerate uh, give you what you want? Regenerate um, answers the same uh, answers gives you an answer for the same prompt once again, and every time you do it, it's different. It's going to say, "Oh, you didn't like that. How about this way?" And that, that's what the regenerate is going to do. All right. So um, I like, okay, I like that. And then the next thing we're going to do, is start diving into everything. All right. Uh, you can include educational breakdowns. And... And here's the thing that should create some awe, hopefully. Um, all right, so this is a long prompt um, or longish. So now what we're gonna do, we have that core, we gotta create some strategy around it. And that's what we're doing. Now what I need you to do is break down, I'm gonna click enter while it's going and I'll read it. Now what I need you to do is break down this niche into 12 categories, which will fully encompass the niche. Then I need you to organize them January through December based on when that, uh, or yeah, when that category, uh, which will be the theme for that month, will make the greatest impact on sales and marketing. So basically, hey, there's 12 months in a year. Let's make it simple. We have, we have one core, 12 months. And then the next question is, hey, when, when should I put, when should I talk about this? When should I talk about that throughout the year? Have it organized it January through December based on greatest impact. Things to consider that it will consider. What if you're a nonprofit, your fiscal year is different. If you're a for-profit, your fiscal year is different. If you're a government you, stuff, uh, working with government contracts, your fiscal year is different. If you're doing something around, if you live in Florida, your 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 uh, most popular months are going to be different, and your winter months in Chicago are going to be different or Boston. <laughs> so that's what that's what this is going to take into consideration. It's going to organize everything. So, so, let's so see Patrick, go ahead. if I could ask a question, um, this particular client, and I don't want you to do it on this example, but this particular client, one, some of their lab moves are from university to university. So is that that's something we could even narrow down even further with this? Yeah. So a lot of the lab moves are from university to university. Uh, what time of year? Uh, all it could it could vary. I was asking the question basically because moving onto a campus when it's when school is in session as opposed to summertime or winter breaks or whatnot. But I, I don't necessarily want to see that. But I'm just kind of asking you a question in general. It's easy. So so all I'm going to okay. do is I, I put that new piece of information and I asked it to redo it. And so let, let's cool. just see what it came up with while it's creating the new stuff. So January. We're going to focus on equipment logistics. January is often a planning month for many businesses. This is a good time to emphasize logistics of a moving expensive lab equipment, detailing how Brookline handles dedicated machinery precision. February, specialized training. Highlights the extensive training of Brookline staff, particularly with handling hazardous material and infection specimens. Right, All the content we're putting out there, just so everybody knows from a marketing standpoint, in marketing, like I was in the military. So uh, in, the, in the military, the people who are on the front lines fighting, is the main component. Everything else is supporting them. Same thing with, with this. 
everything is sales. Everything else is supporting sales. That's that's that that's all it is. So marketing, mm-hmm. every marketing effort should be supporting sales. Uh, you know, bottom line. And so the marketing, social media stuff and everything else, all that's doing is meeting people where they are, giving them information about you and giving them enough so they know what you do, what you don't do. Also hitting them at the right times helps. And so that's what all this is doing. And if you give constantly to them information, that's like, oh, that's that's good to know. That's good to know. That's good to know. That's awesome. I'm thinking... Then you hit them at that. Then eventually when they do need you or they know someone that needs you, they'll refer you or use you uh, for whatever uh, product or service or whatever uh, you may be selling. And so that's, that's the whole idea of the marketing component. And so that's all, all content should be really doing that supporting sales and doing those kind of things. And so that's why, that's why it's important to do this. So January's uh, planning month, highlight extensive training uh, with uh, March temperature control moves as winter turns to spring, the changing temperatures can pose challenges right? So it's taking that into consideration. April, international and cross-country moves, contingency planning, customer testimonials, innovation packing techniques, custom uh, grading, transportation, time management, scheduling, regulatory compliance, cost efficiency and budget, and year in review and looking ahead. That's great. And now guess what? It did it again. But let me show you something else. Okay, let's see. This is among categories. And you should be four to five bullets outline. Hold on one second. All right. So if you guys notice that these categories here that it's coming up with are more of, you know, let's see, education, equipment, logistics, specialized training, temperature control, moves, international cross country moves, contingency plan. Uh, Actually, would Joe, would you say that these these would be beneficial for the uh, commercial property owners, facility managers, and lab managers? Would they get uh, educational information from these things? Or is this more tailored towards uh, internally towards the business? Uh, no, I, I think it's, it's geared towards the managers, the lab managers and whatnot. Okay, awesome. So we're gonna stick with that. Sometimes it doesn't do that, and sometimes it takes a different angle. Like it says, it's more shaped internally, but we want it to be that really, really educational base towards everybody else. So we can make that adjustment. But let's see what it did with um with that with that adjustment that you know Joe gave me a little bit more information. Lab moves are from university to university. I want to redo these with that in consideration. So we have equipment logistics at the beginning of the semester. Highlight the current position. Okay, uh, contingency planning, regulatory compliance. Let's see how that kind of uh, changes a little bit. Yep, so it, it does change a little bit. Regulatory compliance, interdisciplinary collaborations, end of year academic transitions, international cross country moves, temperature controlled moves, uh, new academic year preparation, specialized training. And so it's actually all it did, all it did really is it's a lot of the same ideas, but it focused okay. in on when the universities are doing things. And we know that in the middle of a semester, it's unlikely that something's going to happen. They're probably going to put it off until later just because it's it's a big hassle and there's other things happening. They, they have done lab moves on university campuses during the school year and the semester, okay. and that's a logistical challenge. So that's why I kind of didn't want to focus that's, entirely that's on it, but right. I was curious. Yeah. And then and then if you if you focus on if we just give out this content, this is more of the generalized like this is typically what happens. Mm-hmm. Um, cause we're trying to hit the majority of people. So, so I okay. like that you did give it to me, uh, give that to okay. me. Though. All right. So the next thing we're going to do, um, okay. All right. I'm going to click enter on this and then we're going to go through what I just did. So perfect. Now I need you to list the months and themes or categories under each to give me four or five billets within an outline for an article for that month. So basically there's about four or five weeks in a month, right? And um, I want to do at least one social media post a week. So in order to do that, like I just need them to bullet all this out for me. So they're going to give me four or five ideas per month. And since we already have 
the themes for that month, right? From a top end strategy kind of standpoint, like, hey, we, we have 12 months. We know what we're going to be talking about in that month. And now all we have to do is go downwards, right? Like expand on that for each week. Okay. And then I said, I said four to five bullets because there are four or five weeks in a month. I need you to figure out how many weeks there are in each month and do it for that. And it got it wrong again. So it has, it has a, uh, with comp more complex kind of step questions, uh, it does get things wrong, but you can do this with a correction. It, it put four weeks for January. January has five weeks. It does this fairly often. Sometimes it gets right. Sometimes it gets it wrong. So I try, I, I try to get it right, but it, it didn't do it, which is fine. It's just an extra add one more to January this this month and this month. That's all you have to do to fix it. But let's see what it came up with. So January, why proper lab equipment handling matters, avoiding costly mistakes. From microscopes to mass spectrometer, specialized equipment moves. Best practices for prepping lab equipment for moves. Case study, successful equipment relocation between two major universities. And look, it actually took into consideration the case study I put in before. Um, February, contingency planning, vital world contingency planning lab moves. So Joe, your thoughts on this? And if anybody else had any questions uh, on this or this point, please uh, let me know. Well, those look good. All right, great. So now what we have, right? We have everything deeply rooted uh, in, in the core of who we're actually serving, who we're trying to sell to. Then we have our core niche. And then now we've created the categories for each month, which are going to be like themes. Um, and then now we have the sub subjects or titles, or ideas for that week for the social media posts. So now we're going to dive into it a little bit more. Um, Go ahead. Allison had a question about citation. Get citations. Get citations. Um, oh, that is Grammarly. Sorry, it's an overlay. It's not part of GPT. Apologies. That it's popping up there. It's a Grammarly thing. So it's Grammarly here and Grammarly. Yeah, there it is. You can see it says Grammarly, open Grammarly. Um, little thing about Grammarly, it does have an AI rewrite tool. So if you want it to rewrite stuff for you, it has a built-in AI as well. If you have something and you want it to just upgrade it or lower it or, or um, grade level or or, or, or or to not be so, I don't know, if you want it to add new words, it could do that as well. All right. Um, now what we're going to do is, let's see, week one, importance, playtime setting. Okay, so I'm not going to use the preloaded pre, pre prompts. What we're going to do now is, uh, let's start with January. I need you to, or I need a social media post for Facebook and LinkedIn for each week. I need you to use the bullet created and give me the, and, and write out the posts. They need to be They need to be educational and uh, something like a tip or lesson or um, idea they can take and implement right away. Um, okay, and let's do that. So, Patrick, while it's figuring that one out, there was a question about. Um... Are, how are you at, are, are we at risk for AI hallucinations and any advice for mitigating those other than extensive fact checking? Hallucinations. Um, if you could elaborate a little bit about specifically what you mean about that. Paul, could you come on mic and clarify? Sure. So, Patrick, I work in tech, so I provide IT support for small and medium businesses. And um, I, at its early stage, I don't have chat GPT-4, but 3.5. I understand the database is to like 2021 or something. So I also played around with BARD, which has current data. Um, the problem that I found is uh, some of the problems that my own users run into where they try to Google or YouTube problem solve themselves and they just get bad data, irrelevant stuff. So in trying to use um, these tools, these AI tools to come up with article ideas, 
I found that um, I was the victim of AI hallucinations where it just kind of makes stuff up based on false information, based on things garnered from non-reputable sources, from trolls on Reddit and things like that. So, um, you know, my situation is a little unique, but I know that there's been a lot of concern about this. And I just wondered if you had any advice for yep. identifying that. Yep. So let me go into it. Um, the reality is that uh, after AI came out, um, the prediction is that this year there will be 10 times more content on the internet than there was in 2022, <laughs> just because AI, 10 times the amount. So it's going to be, there's going to be a lot, right? So how do we do this? Like I said, GPT is not a thing that does stuff for you. I would not be able to do this without marketing knowledge. This is an assistant. Assistant is going to get things wrong. You're the one that's, you can only delegate authority, not responsibility, right? From a leadership standpoint. So if, if you're managing people or an AI, you're not supposed to just take it as is, uh, right? And so now coming up with ideas and things like that, like you were saying, okay, the, the, the hallucinations, like it's just coming up with random stuff. Um, you still need to have that knowledge in order to ask things, right? That That's the best case scenario. If you don't have that knowledge, you should know your industry, right? That's what I mean by knowledge. I don't mean the knowledge of using AI or all that kind of stuff. I mean, you need to be able to like know your industry, to ask questions and be able to know if it's correct or not. Um, you shouldn't be using it just for something brand new and starting a company that's brand new anyway. Um, with it, with no information, you don't have any experience because you don't know what to check for. It's just like it's just like starting a new company, hiring someone for something you've never done before. They're going to come to you with things you and you don't know if they're right or wrong because you don't have that experience. So again, treat it as a person um, that that's just an assistant, um, and and that'll uh, that'll work that way. Th does that does that kind of clarify it? It does. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yes, it, it will make stuff up. It's very, very confident. Uh, you still need to know what you're doing. Uh, AI is an assistant, not a solution to not doing anything. All right, so now social media posts. Here we go. So week one, why do proper lab equipment handling matter? Uh, why proper lab equipment handling matters? Avoiding costly mistakes. Tip of the week, proper handling lab equipment during a move is crucial, not just for maintaining the integrity, but avoiding costly damages. Always use proper containers and cushioning. The longevity of your equipment might depend on it. Um, you know, very simple, straightforward one from microscopes to mass spectrometers. Tip of the week, every piece of lab equipment from microscopes to mass spectrometers require unique handling, familiarize your team with each item's specific needs and all that. I have a couple of things I want to do with this content now, but Joe, this, is this um, is this at least a start? Yes, uh, definitely. Okay. Shouldn't the LinkedIn posts be longer? Yes, you can make them longer. You could do all this. So now I'm going to show you how to manipulate content. All right, watch this. So this is great. Okay, first off, you have to know a little bit about content. So on, on average, this is not how well someone can read, but the average reading level online is eighth grade reading level. What does that mean? Does, that doesn't mean they can't people can't read at a 12th grade, 13th, 14th grade level, that means that their brains are gonna get a little bit more taxed when they're reading that and they're not gonna want to read the whole thing. So you lower it to a point where they can endlessly pretty much read things. Now you have to also make sure to frame it towards an audience and you wanna make sure to know who you're speaking to as well. Make sure your voice, that will be your voice, which is like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm presenting at a university as a doctor, as a doctor, uh, for a lecture. And I want to make sure I'm, you know, very, I'm speaking very, you know, high level, uh, or sorry, like very detailed, but like, a, a, like a 14th grade reading level. Whereas uh, if you're speaking to someone, you can do it for a fourth grade. So let me show you. This is great. I need you to um, make this more witty and fun. So let, let's say, let's say that's, that's what's going on here. Let's say you know. Let's say this isn't fun enough for 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 your brand specifically, right? I I, I know this is a common thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna change it up a bit. So treat your lab equipment like royalty. They prefer cushioned thrones and gentle hands. A little TLC goes a long way in avoiding those royal pains of repair costs. If it, if it becomes too cheesy, all right, you just say, hey, it's too cheesy. Please rearrange it so it's not. 
Now, another thing we're going to be able to, we're going to do here is uh, let's let's make it a fourteenth uh, grade reading level. Uh, but I love but keep the wittiness. All right, I'm going to stop generating and do it again. All right, so now, so I showed you like you can change the voice to kind of how you want it. It doesn't have to be witty, it can be whatever you want. A good way of doing it is who is going to be looking at this stuff? Tell them like, hey, this is who's going to be reading it. They typically like reading stuff like this in this way. Can we make sure that all the content is this way? So if you don't know, if you can't like, verbally say the voice explain it in your own words it'll pick up on it so here we go same thing but fourth grade 14th grade reading level um why proper lab equipment handling matters avoiding cost of mistakes considering uh consideration of relocation esteem your lab uh, uh, oh, sorry esteem your lab apparatus not merely as instruments but invaluable assets their well-being warrants meticulous care circumventing undue repair expenditures um intellectual nugget for lab managers should laboratories of apparatus possess sentiment there's aspire for zenith of care during transitions and so now it's going that way and then you could also do now a fourth uh grade reading level all right now let's see So Patrick, just to give you a little bit of a heads up, we're about nine fifty, yep. close to nine fifty. So just we're yep. getting, and uh, we're 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 getting close uh, to a couple more thing, couple more prompts, and we're done. So cool. of course, I'll simplify simplify the fourth grade reading level. So moving tip: think of your lab tools like toys. Handle them carefully so they don't break, and you won't have to spend money fixing them. Like you know, very simple. It's still the wittiness. It's still getting the message across. It's still the same thing tailor it to your audience and also if you have multiple audiences and they're different you now have your theme for the month you have your social media posts and before what used to be impossible which is like hey i can barely get a marketing thing out for one audience how am i going to do it for multiple all you do is just do it once and then ask it to redo it for that audience and ask it to redo it for that one. You push it out and you can hit your audience so much better, uh, like where they are, right? So the next thing we're going to do is, well, okay, how about Instagram, TikTok, YouTube shorts, and all that kind of stuff. So now we're going to do, um, so I'm going to, first off, make it an eighth grade reading level again. So Patrick, for the LinkedIn post, could you make them... I think that was part of what Allison was was referring to is that the Facebook posts, yeah, it's okay if they're a certain length, but how about LinkedIn? Shouldn't that be, I don't know, three, four hundred words, whatever? Is that an adjustment it can make? Yep. Also, I'm gonna throw something else in those posts. And And also, is it, it customary to cite chat GPT as a source when you do Facebook posts and social media posts, or is it just something more if you do like a blog or? I to teach their own. There's not any rules around it. It's the um, Wild West. Yep. And so what I did here is I, I changed it to eighth grade reading level. I redid all of them with that. I wanted the LinkedIn posts to be longer. And I asked them for citations where they got their information from. So you can do that. You can also ask GPT to fact check itself. Oh, okay. It, it didn't input it here. Usually for long form, it's going to though, but I'm not going to dive into it more. So sometimes it does, sometimes okay. it's not, but all right. So what do we do here? Moving tip, think of your lab. Okay. So it did LinkedIn important for lab managers when relocating lab equipment. Imagine you're handling valuable Art pieces, every microscope, beaker, hefty repair cost. So it, it, it went longer. If you give it specific, like I want it to be 200 words, 
or whatever, or a hundred words, um, it'll get close to it. It's not going to be pinpointed exactly at a okay. hundred. It'll get close though. And so you get, you can make adjustments there. If you want more hashtags, it'll do that as well. Um, it's pretty much that. So now I'm going to put, this is perfect. I need you to also give me images I should use with these posts. I also need you to do this for Instagram. I need you to give me the script I should use for TikTok and also the script for YouTube shorts. So then once you have your starting point, let, let's, let's do some more stuff with it, right? Because you're going you're gonna to be putting this on a lot of platforms now because all you have to do is do a one time and have it reword it in many different ways for all your different platforms, create some scripts for you. Um, and then it's just on the script part video, right? Eventually we're going to have it create video for us as well. But right now it's um, it, it doesn't do that. So you can just use image generating tools if you'd like or some other stuff. But or but for TikTok, if you're using TikTok or YouTube Shorts or anything like that, it's going to give you the script. It's, hey, lab manager, did you know a small mishap can set your lab's progress back by weeks? That's why at Brookline, we give top-notch care to each one of your lab tools. No more moving mishaps. Secure your lab's future today. Right? That's pretty cool. Nice short. You'll do a little bit of editing uh, with, with a background, some music uh, that's just stock with YouTube and um, you're good. And then you have a short and now you're hitting your uh, audience there, right? Don't make it complicated. Everything I'm doing is the dirty work of marketing. It's the foundation. It's the giving part, all that flashy stuff. That's awesome. That should be icing on the cake. That's what separates you. But in terms of think of any big company, they have all their articles all their social media, everything stems from that root that we created and all the content they create is all that, which creates branding like strength, right? And every time people see it, they get the same message in different ways in diff on different platforms and, and all that uh, sort of stuff. So we, we've now got this spit, it spit out all this information, all these posts and whatnot. How does, you know, in terms of the client, like how would it be, would it be downloaded into a spreadsheet or a Word doc or what, what does it look like when you want to take that? Or do you have to do a cut and paste from chat GPT? Yep. So you can do cut and paste. You can also do something like this. Uh, I need uh, this organized and you can do this in many ways. You could ask it for code to input into Google Sheets because, because Google has their own uh, power uh, kind of tools in the extension where it's a uh, scripts. So you can ask it for a script to input everything for you with mm -hmm. columns and it does it all for you. Or you can say, I need this organized in a uh, table uh, from a high level. Um, so maybe you do something like this, right? L let's see what it does. You got to play with it. You got to ask it to put it in the information you'd like. Uh, sorry, put, put it in a way you'd like. So right, right here, it's kind of doing it in a, no, there we go. See so it's creating a little bit of a uh, a table for me. And so this table is a little bit easier to copy paste into a spreadsheet, right? Because it's, it's going to recognize that these are columns and it's going to put in columns. So maybe you want to do it this way. Um, you're using other software. Like it, it really depends what software you're using, how you want mm -hmm. to input it. Ask it that way and it'll provide it that way. Uh, it's as simple as that. Um, the next thing I recommend is using something like uh, using a content uh, social media content scheduling tool to mm -hmm. schedule all this out. And the good news is this is all evergreen. What that means is it's relevant now and five years from now. Why? Because we're not doing anything about politics. We're not doing anything about news. We're not doing anything about anything that is short lived, short lived as anything less than 10 years. All right. Like, um, and so we can't predict the future, but we just, we, we aim for it. Right. And so then what we do is we schedule this out one time we're done with it. And you have content going out for five years now, right? Every year you just go and check to make sure things are still relevant, but that's all. And so this is the foundation for all your content. It looks like you're doing stuff all the time because you are, you did the work and it's just doing everything for you. Um, let's just let's just dive into questions or anything else you wanna dive into. But again, what we created is just two examples of two weeks for social media, for different platforms. And we have something, of course, you're going to do this a lot deeper for yourself to come up with stuff that's really relevant to you you know, that, that, that your audience is going to love, but Joe, go ahead, Joe. Oh, no, I was, I was going to say, people are asking questions about, uh, we will be taking the recording of this and sending it to everybody who signed up for, uh, for the webinar. And we'll also probably put it on my pinnacle networks, um, uh, web website as well. 
Uh, Patrick is open to doing these types of presentations for groups like this. So if you're interested in that, I'm sure Patrick would be happy to pop his uh, contact info into the chat before we leave. I'll also include it on his on the uh, email that follows up on this. Um, does anybody have any specific questions? You can come on, Mike, if you want. And um, you, I think you were very thorough, Patrick. They don't have any questions. There's just no, nothing but praise for your work. So um, yeah, I, I just want to say I don't have a question necessarily. I, I have too many questions. I'll, I'll follow up with Patrick, but. I just want to thank you, Patrick, for making this, you know, super accessible. I mean, you know, we know that the power is enormous with AI, but it just seems kind of like overwhelming. And you just showed, you know, very easily, you know, how, you know, we can do this. So it's very empowering. So thank, thanks very much for that. Yeah, it's, it's thank definitely, you, Jason. It was definitely breaking down barriers for entry to barrier, right, to, to start doing things. And ha having I, I've having done a one on one, I think the first one on one, Patrick and I had my brain seized. <laughs> and then this is actually right. this probably pales in comparison to some of the live webinars he's done where he gets even more detailed than this. This is kind of a, a nice overview. So, again, thank you, Patrick. Uh, one last call for questions and then we'll we'll wrap. So. All right. Well, again, uh, Patrick, thank you so much for, for doing this for us. Um, if I, you have I, put, any I put my meeting link in the chat, uh, all my stuff's in or Yeah. So you guys can all schedule meetings with me. Uh, if you'd like, I also put my YouTube in there. So you can go yep. uh, find more videos on there. Like for example, if you guys save this chat and then go and go to my YouTube and find the chat video, it'll show you how to convert any chat into a Google Sheets document with columns, a first name, last name, email, calendar link, and anything else you want. So you can actually use, you know, network chat content or meeting chat stuff. Uh, but I put, put all my stuff in there. Sorry, Joe. Yep. Oh, no worries. Um, okay. So that's uh, going to wrap it up for here. I'm going to stop our recording. Thank you, Patrick, again. And uh, if you're interested in uh, future webinars that we'll be holding. We'll be doing that over the course of the fall. And if you have a topic of interest or perhaps are interested in another type of uh, AI thing, we certainly can have Patrick back if he's willing to. He might, if you, his calendar might be booked up, but we'll, we'll fit him in somehow. But um, anyway, thanks again and um, have a great day, everybody.